Let's begin our exploration of plant families by looking at showy monocots. And formerly, this would have been the lily ACE. Now it's like lily ACE with quotes around it. And we'll see why in a moment. But um, first, let's look at the little, take a look at the little iconography from the Peterson's Field Guide. It's so descriptive. It shows a six-pointed star, which, if carefully looked at, would be um, two sets of three. Three sepals and three petals. But they look so much alike that you can hardly tell them apart, and sometimes they're just called tepals. Here's a picture of a lily, and yeah, you might say six petals, but nope, there's three sepals, three petals. You could really look very subtly and see that the sepals are kind of outside where the petals are, but um, that's... Um, a little challenging to detect. The feature is that they look alike, and they're sometimes called tepals, showy flowers, typically. The uh, form, the family in the old sense, and what we're kind of lumping together because they have a lot of features in common and are easy to recognize, um, are now in different plant families. So in this um, table here is a number of plant families that include genera that formerly and in our older manuals have been regarded as being in the lily family. For example, trilliums in the Trilliaceae and, for example, um, asparagus in the Asparagaceae and so on. But um, what's still in the lily family? Well, lily has to be. Um, and trout lilies in the genus Erythronium and a few other things. So the so we have a number of plant families that uh, we're lumping together for convenience and tradition. So let's see what they have in common. They are monocots. They have, um, their flower parts are in threes. And again, this is a lily and it's got um, three sepals and three petals that look so much alike you can barely distinguish them. And so they're sometimes called tepals. There are one, two, three, four, five, six stamens and um, a pistil consisting of a syncarpus gynesium of three um, carpels, typically maturing into a capsule. Here's a picture of a plant called bellwort. The flowers are descending, so I guess that's why it's called bellwort, like a bell. And I like these flowers because they look so much like leaves. The, the sense that the petals are modified leaves really comes home with this particular plant. And it's uh, in the genus Uvularia. Here's a, a series of photos of that of that plant showing on the left the flowers intact with the six tepals and then in the middle um, a flower with several of the tepals removed so that you can see uh, most of the six stamens and then on the right several of the stamens are removed because they were blocking the view of the pistil and on the right you can see the pistil with its um, three branch stigma uh, indicative of the Syncarpus gynesium consisting of three carpels. A very typical member of the, of the lily family and a very typical monocot. And look how the leaves are narrow and have parallel veins. Here we have Erythronium or trout lily. This is one of the members of the lily, former lily family that are actually currently still in the lily family. And look at the the narrow leaves with what you could make out to be parallel veins and um, three sepals and three petals that look virtually identical. Trout lily. Here's trout lily in fruit, or just beginning to be in fruit. This picture shows the corolla um, withered and sort of just barely hanging on while the ovary matures into the fruit. This is a plant called trillium. Trillium, which is no longer in the lily family, but um, close, is one of the few of these showy monocots that doesn't have uh, so-called tepals. The sepals are green and leaf-like, and the petals are expanded and colorful, so it looks a little more typical. Three sepals, three petals, six stamens, and a syncarpus gynesium. Um, these leaves are kind of broad and look almost net-veined, but, you know, those characteristics are flexible. This is another picture of trout lily. Uh, this is um, This is the yellow form of, excuse me, the yellow species. We have two common species in Ohio, the yellow trout lily, Erythronium, um, Erythronium americanum, and a white one called Erythronium albidum. Um, Daylily 
is the genus Hemerocallus. It's it's uh, kind of weedy. What we're trying to do when we show you representatives of these families is have some examples of ones that are um, native wildflowers and also a few examples where the family includes them, which most of the time they do, some weeds. And the daylily can, is something of a weed. It's it's escaped along roadsides and sometimes in in uh, prairies. Um, but what I'd like to draw your attention to is the is the Liliaceae in quotes. It's in a different family now, but the showy monocot features of having three sepals and three petals that look alike, so they can be called tepals. These have long, narrow uh, leaves with parallel veins, six stamens, and it's a pretty typical showy monocot. Um, onions are in the in the former lily for, are formerly in the lily family, and um, these um, species have their flowers in a kind of an inflorescence that's called an umbel. Many flowers attached at one point at the top of the flowering stalk. And the um, individual flowers, as you can see, typical showy monocot, former lily ACE, three sepals, three petals, looking a lot alike, so you call them tepals, a nodding wild onion, Allium cernuum. Asparagus, um, formerly a member of the lily ACE, and it's got the features. Um, three sepals and three petals, and boy, they look a lot alike. And um, this is uh, not a native to our area. It's escaped a little bit along roadsides. Mostly it's a garden plant. A lovely native wildflower, um, formerly in the Liliaceae, is called wild hyacinth. It's not related closely to the garden plant that's called the hyacinth, but the wild part means that it eh, could be thought of as reminiscent of it. This is a lovely spring wildflower that can form pretty vast swaths, like shown here in this woodland in Marion County. It's called Camassia scyloides, and um, the inflorescence is what's called a raceme. It's an elongate inflorescence with flowers that are individually stalked. And here we see the typical Liliaceae, um, in quotes, it's in a different family now, but the typical showy monocot that used to be Liliaceae, and some of which still are, um, Three sepals and three petals that look so much alike that they could be called tepals, six stamens, and a gynecium, but nice superior ovary. You can see some lines on the ovary suggestive of the fact that it has a syncarpus gynecium consisting of three carpels. Here's a plant called Solomon's Seal. The picture shows a nice monocot trait, the parallel veins on these sort of narrow-ish leaves. The inflorescence here is a axillary um, group of two and once again um, three sepals and three petals that look so much alike you can't distinguish them and they're if you tucked in there and looked i'm sure you'd see six stamens and you'd see in syncarpus gynecium of three carpels solomon's seal here's solomon's seal a different species i think in fruit showing the fruits which i believe are are berries solomon's seal a member of the formerly a member of the lily family. Coming up next, the mustards.